And you know that I am 44 years old and I'm turning 45 in August. Yeah, so.、Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, sometimes I could feel that I need to eat every two hours. Would you be willing to? The biggest factors in that is blood sugar regulation.、Mm -hmm. and What happens is that ends up throwing off what's called cortisol off, which is your stress hormone in your body. And cortisol will actually rob your sex hormonal pathway. So, because if you are constantly stressed out, then what happens is that you don't really have, your body senses that it doesn't have the time to reproduce. So, what it does is it takes more of your resources and converts it to survival or cortisol. Patterns. So basically, it's shuttling blood sugar to your muscles, so you can either run away from the tiger or fight the tiger. Okay,、mm -hmm. but and that's more of like from a、uh, prehistoric aspect of when we were developing. Because today there's really no tiger, but it's like society is a tiger, right? Whether it's、mm -hmm. like work, kids, family life. Just in general,、uh, you know, there's so many social issues right now, just with like expectations, especially for women, and so all of these kind of act like a tiger and they stress you out, right? Because you're constantly thinking, what are people going to think about me? Am I doing the right things? And then that basically robs your sex hormonal pathway, and it leads to these types of issues, like we see, like chronic fatigue. A lot of people have a misconception of thyroid issues. You have weight gain. You'll have irregular menstrual cycles. Hot flashes are something that I commonly see and help people with. Mood swings, as you can、yes. have PCOS. Hair falling out. Sometimes you'll have like depression or anxiety will come with that as well. Migraines. So there's quite a bit that can happen. So yeah. So what I recommend for most of my patients because cortisol, what it does, it balances your blood sugar throughout the day. So it's supposed、mm -hmm. to help keep you from getting that fatigue. But it's prolonged for whether it could be just like a year, it could be a decade, whatever it is. Eventually, it's going to catch up with you, and it's just going to rob that hormone. Hormonal pathway so much that you just kind of tucker out, right? Your sex hormones get so depleted. So balancing your blood sugar is one of the best ways to basically prevent that from happening, because cortisol is a glucocorticosteroid, which means that it helps release glucose into your bloodstream. And if you are eating every two and a half hours to three hours. Basically, you don't have to secrete cortisol to balance your blood sugar, which keeps your sex hormones fresh. I hope I really ranted there, so I hope that helped explain it. And what age do women experience hormone change? Yeah, there's classically the menopause age, and that varies.、Mm -hmm. That's when women lose their menstrual cycle and they start going through these hormonal changes. That varies.、Um, and now for me, I have I see women as early as teenagers. So、mm -hmm. it's like there's a real discrepancy right now in when hormonal issues actually start to occur. Because there are medications such as birth control, people are just really stressed out. People aren't eating healthy now, and basically, what's happening is that it's just ruining their hormonal pathway. So we're seeing it earlier and earlier all the time now. So basically, the menopausal age—it just depends. Normally, you see it around like、uh, the mid 40s to 50s, somewhere in there,、uh, but it just varies person to person. Honestly, I could say that the most thing that I'm afraid of is a thing called, you know, we talk about it, the menopausal. How can I avoid to have a bad menopausal experience? Because I heard a lot of stories from my friends who have.、Mm -hmm. uh, some some of the basic things that you can do are dietary. So kind of like you were saying, eating every two to three hours is a really good way just to help regulate your cortisol levels so that you have more fuel for your sex hormonal pattern. Pathways decrease your stress as much as possible. Avoid alcohol、uh, is a really big one because a lot of women tend to turn to red wine at night, and it's okay. It's just like moderation, but not huge amounts of it. Avoid like the biggest food intolerances, which are sugar,、uh, gluten, dairy, corn, and soy. Those are like your biggest. 
I guess you would say your biggest food intolerances and your main food intolerances that you see, because a lot of those can cause hormonal issues as well and GI issues that ties into your hormonal system. And then basically you can work with like a functional medicine practitioner. And a lot of the times they can do lab work on you and help keep you more regulated and help make the transition a lot easier, especially making sure that your nutritional profiles and everything, uh, vitamins, minerals are balanced appropriately. You said also that there is a lot of misconception about the issue of thyroid. Can you explain a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah. So there, I don't know about... A because you're in Denmark, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So in the United States, there are a lot of thyroid patients. And uh, yeah. what that means is that they've been classified as a th like their thyroid is uh, not working correctly. And a lot of the times, if you look at the hormonal pathways, that isn't necessarily the case. A lot of people have what's called a secondary thyroid problem, which means that it's not primary. So primary means that the thyroid is the issue, but a secondary thyroid problem means that the thyroid issue is being inhibited or it's being caused by a different organ system. So in most cases, probably around 80% of cases, I see that thyroid patients are actually adrenal patients or cortisol patients because your adrenal secrete cortisol and cortisol, when we look at the hormonal pathway, it will inhibit your metabolically active thyroid hormone T3 but it'll also inhibit TSH as well, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. Uh, most of the time, what I see is that uh, a lot of it basically comes from like a cortisol imbalance. And that's like the first lab that we run on most of my patients. So we do a saliva test because your blood work now is decent, but it's not the best at finding what the root cause of the problem is. If you look at the hormonal pathway, most doctors look at your blood work and they look at your estrogen and testosterone levels, but they don't look at your cortisol levels. And so when we look at the pathway, if we, we can say that cortisol is the root cause of the problem because we know that you'll bias that pathway and we look at another precursor to your sex hormone called DHEA. So as you come down and you look at the progression of cholesterol to pregnant alone, and then it diverges at that point. So you get a two-way street. It either goes to DHEA, and then it gets into your sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, or pregnant alone gets pr converted to progesterone and then to cortisol. So what we know from that lab is that if you have elevated cortisol levels and low DHEA levels, then you can't make estrogen and testosterone, so you're gonna have hormonal problems. And we know that if your cortisol levels are high, then you're biasing that pathway or you're making more cortisol than you are your sex hormones. And so from that, what we can deduce is that when I see most practitioners or most women that are having hormonal issues and they're consulting their doctor, is that when they're only running estrogen and testosterone and they're not really looking at their cortisol levels because just the traditional model has been taught an improper paradigm or an outdated paradigm, which just isn't very accurate. And so if you just look at estrogen and testosterone, you don't really know what is happening above that pathway. You just say, oh, you're low. So what they do is they give you injections of estrogen or testosterone to boost those back up, but it never really fixes the problem. So what happens then is that you basically just get somebody who's dependent on an exogenous form of hormones because they can't produce their own or they're so stressed out or they don't have the resources to make it. Does that make sense? It's actually really interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's something, yeah, I, I never thought about <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody's taught that way unless, uh, uh, you know, yeah. this is a fairly new paradigm and it's something that, yeah. you know, more of your functional, if they're a, class, a classified functional medicine practitioner, then it's something that they're going to look at more so than like your traditional doctor, because this is a postdoctoral study. It's not something that like, you, you know, you would think that most doctors were taught this, but they're not. It's not in standard curriculum that is in the medical schools. It's mm -hmm. something that 
more refined, uh, highly successful practitioners are treating on their own. So if you don't have doctors going and studying like postdoctoral degrees or certifications, then most of the time they're going to be missing really big key concepts in these treatments and how to get to the root cause of the problem. I would just say, you know, that whoever you trust with your health, that you kind of bet their education and where they come from and what they've learned. Because that, I mean, you're trusting somebody with your body and you only get one body. So it's like, why would you just leave it to somebody who isn't really passionate about it and who isn't really, you know, kind of like as caring and isn't going to take the time to spend it with you and understand what's going on with you, right? So uh, I know that that's kind of like like a little bit of, uh, I'm not trying to like shame any doctors or anything like that, but I'm saying that there are good doctors and there are bad doctors. So make sure that you choose the right one because the traditional medical model, we can see that it's failing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how many people have diabetes or heart disease or hormonal issues? There's just not very good. And the people that are kind of doing this are just run by like big pharmaceutical companies, in my opinion. But that was kind of like a little rant. So I apologize. But some basic key concepts I would say is definitely work with somebody who knows diet and be really conscious about what you eat. So I think just like you said, Suzette, earlier, it's like eat every two, two and a half to three hours. Make sure that your blood sugar is regulated. Avoid sugar, high concentrations of sugar. Gluten is a big one. Dairy, corn, and soy. Those are the big ones. Uh, the, the really cool fact about Europe in general, though, is that they burnt their GMO fields a long time ago, whereas we didn't in the United States. So if you're in Europe, you can actually eat gluten and bread and not have as many issues as we do in the U United States. And so that's a, a pretty interesting fact. So yeah, you all can have bread, but we, we can't. And I see it all the time and everybody's like, oh, I just want to move to Europe so I can eat bread. You know? so, uh, yeah. But I would say that those, if I had to say, those are the biggest key factors. Right now, what I'm doing a little bit differently than I would say some of my colleagues is that we have health coaching that we provide to all of our patients uh, just to keep them accountable. So we meet like once a week and we meet for about an hour, hour and a half. Like last week we met for two hours actually because everybody was just so engaged and asking questions. And that's because health is, isn't is just, you know, this biochemical component to it or physical component. It's also an emotional component as well, right? Mm -hmm. So having the emotional coaching and kind of somebody to keep you accountable in my clinic has been a huge game changer for getting people results. Oh, that's all. And thank you very much. Is it possible to a lot of things about female hormones? It's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, good night to me and good afternoon to you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Have a good Bye. day. Easy to get stress and uh, thank you very much. No, thank, thank you, you for having me. I really appreciate <laughs> it. It was a lot of fun. So